Hey guys, today I'll be covering the many ways of earning Ostron Standing and the most efficient ways of doing so. Now first off, Ostron Standing is the basic currency for all vendors in Cetus, excluding Nikak and Tiasani. So what are the ways of earning Standing? Well, your first option is Bounties, which if you don't know, consist of five different tiers that have multiple stages within them. Each stage within each tier then rewards you with a fraction of the total tier standing reward for completing each stage. So for an example, tier 1 bounties have a full payout of 1440 standing. That standing is then divided by 3 due to there being 3 stages on tier 1 bounties, and therefore each stage rewards 480 standing, which then comes to the total of 1440. This is as of Hotfix 22.25, so the values may have changed if you're watching this video at a later date. Now the bounty board is an option when it comes to standing farming, and it's definitely the most engaging option. However, due to how they operate with the cooldown system, they aren't the most efficient as each tier grows in terms of a time investment needed, which means they're only a viable option if you're trying to acquire one of the rewards from their drop table. So the next option is incursions, which are basically smaller single stage bounties that have a random chance of popping up every 5 minutes while you're out on the planes during the day while no missions are active. Now as I mentioned, they are single stage bounties, which means they also share the same mission pool. So if you're actively hunting these, maybe for the exclusive mods, make sure to bring a Warframe that can basically complete each one. Anyways, incursions just like bounties are only a viable means of standing if one spawns close to your location after completing bounties while undergoing the next two options, or as I said, actively hunting them for the exclusive mods. On top of that, their payouts scale based on the enemy levels on the plane, so if an incursion spawns after you complete a tier 5 bounty, or at a great distance from the gates, expect a pretty nice payout from 400 standing to 800, with that reward decreasing after low tier bounties or if they get close to the gate, with the minimum reward being 100 standing. Next up we have fishing, which is one of the two most efficient ways of earning and farming standing, as you can just stockpile as many fish as you want, and hand them in once the standing reset happens each day. Which means once you've caught some fish, you can trade them in for standing at the fish vendor. Just a few things to note about that conversion though. The size and species of the fish affect the standing payout. Larger fish obviously reward more than medium and smaller ones, and if you want a list of the variations in standing, a link to the wiki page will be in the description. Now the two best places to fish, at least in my opinion, Include the geyser pools during the night time for mortar slungfish, or to the far right after exiting Cetus in the far corner of the map for Goo Polar. Now using baits and dyes can help you further as they'll increase the visibility and spawn chances of rare fish, which actually go for a lot more standing depending on the specific fish. The only downside is those dyes and baits are locked behind certain standing levels. So if you're at a rank that has baits and dyes, just make sure to utilize them by throwing them near the splashes and ripples that pop up in the water. There's also a map on the screen if you need any guidance to both of those locations. Also, if you have a Smetikavat, make sure you equip it when you're planning to fish, as their charm buff can double the fish count if the right buff pops. And then we have mining, which is the second most efficient way of gaining standing. As just like fishing, you can stockpile your gems to the point where you can just trade them into Old Man Sumbat for standing each day. Now the best path of mining large sums of gems, in my opinion, is to pull out your cutter and head straight to the mine next to the geyser pool, as in a recent update DE released an expansion to the closed door caves that added large granite caverns below them. So if the door is open for you, make your way into the cavern and farm all of the ore that you can find. Once you've done so, head out of the cave and move on to the Eidolon Mine, shown on the screen. While moving throughout the mine, gather up all the resources and then make your way to the final mine located at the Grenier Coast Base. This mine covers the most distance and plays host to the most minerals that I've seen so far. So collect them all and then head back to Cetus and repeat the process. Now some runs may yield less or more minerals than others, and I should also mention that just like fishing, the Smetikavats buff and resource boosters do affect the payout, so keep those in mind when you're mining. Also, you can only acquire the Latitude Gems, Centurium, and Nith by mining with the Advanced Nozam Cutter, which only becomes available at Ostron Rank 4. However, it's up to you if you wish to trade them in for standing instead of investing them into other gear or items. 
Finally, we have the last option for how to gain standing, and that's from trading in your fully built Zors for standing at Hop's Anvil. They'll yield various amounts of standing, and I only recommend this option if you've built a complete Zor that you don't like. And that's it for the video. If you wish to recommend your personal guide or location, make sure to leave it in a comment. And if you liked the video and found it helpful, make sure to leave a like, and I'll see you guys next time.